Hello, and welcome to another Crypto Insider interview. I'm Vlad, and today I'm speaking to John Moore, whom I've met at the Litecoin Foundation. And he is one of my heroes because he does all, the, all this grassroots work, and he goes to all sorts of places and convinces them to adopt Bitcoin and Litecoin. And unlike a lot of public speakers who convince maybe bankers or fintech people to invest in cryptocurrencies, he actually speaks to regular folks who have small businesses and they they more or less accept to take payments in Bitcoin and Litecoin, which is huge. And this is the kind of adoption that we should be having. And I'm happy to have you today, John. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me on. So I see a lot of activity on your Twitter feed. I see that you go to all sorts of places and you convince them to accept Bitcoin and Litecoin. And oftentimes I just watch you and I wonder, what is your success rate? I mean, how often do you find people who are enthusiastic about cryptocurrencies? And do you actually have roadblocks or difficulties in explaining to people why they should be accepting them? Or do you get rejections often? Yeah, so just like anything that you're offering to the public, you do get a lot of rejection. It doesn't matter if it's cryptocurrency, if it's um, a new form of payment for a credit card system. It doesn't matter. I used to sell coffee. I mean, no matter what the product is, you get, re you get a lot of rejection. Um, however, I try to focus on the businesses that I think would be interested in accepting it. And I have a, um, I have kind of an insider's view on it because I'm offering regular payments to them. I'm setting up their credit card systems a lot of times. So it's kind of easy to then transition into saying, Hey, how about accepting Bitcoin and Litecoin for payment? And, um, you know, I, I, like you say, you see on Twitter, I get people interested in it. I get people that want to accept it. I have a long list of people that I'm going to be meeting with in the upcoming weeks that are, I'm going to be bringing on board to accept it. So uh, it's exciting. I say focus on the people that are interested and, and don't focus on the people that, that, um, that have no interest. That's my best advice to everybody. But how can you draw the line and say this business is going to be interested and that other one might be skeptical? You know, I kind of, um, I guess I kind of feel the business out. Um, I do focus on a lot of online businesses. So businesses that, that sell items through like an e-commerce website. Um, even though a lot of the videos I post on Twitter are restaurants and stuff, the restaurants are cool because they're more seen by the public. So I just try to get business owners that are more open-minded. I try to go after restaurant owners that are kind of into more high-tech stuff. And um, you know, if somebody wants to use one of my Clover systems, I tell them, hey, great, I'm you know, happy to help you out with the Clover. We want you to enable Litecoin payments in it. And I show them how to uh, enable Litecoin and I just explain the benefits of it. And, uh, you know, people, when they understand what it is, they want to accept it because they realize it's, um, you know, it's a more secure form of money. It's lower fees, it's peer to peer. So, you know, once people get their heads around it, people are excited to be getting Litecoin into the business, which is awesome. That's what I, uh, that's what I'm after, you know. But has this bear market been an impediment or has, has it made people less willing to accept cryptocurrencies just because they hear bad news about the price? So I don't have that in my mind when I go out there to promote to the public. In other words, we're both very into cryptocurrency. In other words, we both track the price. We know, you know exactly when Bitcoin hit 19,000 and what it's at today. The public doesn't know this stuff. I mean, they, they've heard about it before. Most people, some people haven't even heard of Bitcoin and Litecoin. Like they don't even, I go in and I say, um, have you heard of Bitcoin? And they just look at me and say, no. So they're not price focused like we are. 
and I just focus on its properties as a good payment network and good currency. So I'm not trying to convince people to invest in it. I tell people, look, I want you to use it for a payment and like it. Then if you want to invest in it, go ahead. But I'm not a, I'm not a investment specialist. That's not my, my forte. So when we're dealing with the for payments, it's a non-issue. The, the one issue probably would be now for payments when the price is dropping not a lot of people want to spend the Litecoin or Bitcoin. They're, they want to wait till it goes up in price, which is fine. I just tell the businesses, look, set up now. We'll start promoting that you accept Bitcoin and Litecoin for payment. And that way, when the price does move up, you could be on these people's list of businesses that they want to spend the Litecoin and Bitcoin at. So they're, they're basically getting ready now for the next bull run and they have everything in place to be a, they're a merchant that's accepting this as a form of payment. So it's, uh, I'm excited about it. The price doesn't stop me at all. It doesn't deter me. It doesn't stop me. Uh, it just affects my own investments, but that's all right. But do these businesses accept to take cryptocurrencies directly in their wallets or do they use some kind of payments processor? It's really up to what the owner of the business wants. So generally a larger business is going to want to use a payment processor that converts it into US dollar, which is fine. Like we'll set that up for them. They don't have to lift a finger behind the scenes. It converts it in the gateway that we set up. But most of the restaurants we just use, we cut the payment processor out completely and we just go wallet to wallet. And we say to the restaurant, hey, if you want to be, if you want to convert at the end of the night when you're closing out the restaurant, send the stuff to your Coinbase account, your Abra account, or any type of exchange account they have set up and sell. A lot of these restaurants that we do get to accept it, they kind of start looking at my Twitter and they kind of get into it. So a lot of them say to me, you know what, John, I want to keep the Litecoin, especially at these prices right now. And they'll say, they'll wait for it to run up some, and then they're going to plan on selling. So it's really, we can set it up however they want. It's very versatile as a form of payment and very liquid. So you can, can I tell people, you have three options when you get Litecoin and as a payment. You can deposit it, which means send the money right to your bank account, right, by converting it. You can turn around and spend the Litecoin. So there's vendors set up that sell products that these businesses need. Just keep the money in the Litecoin network and crypto community. I'm one of them. I sell paper for um, printers for restaurants. Every restaurant uses this type of paper. So if you get Litecoin or Bitcoin in as a payment, turn around and spend it with me. And I, I beat everybody's prices by at least 10% on the internet. So. They're gonna actually save money by doing it. And then the third option, I, some people I tell just hodl. You don't wanna, you don't wanna convert the money right away. You don't wanna spend it. Just put it into a secure wallet and hodl the coins for a later date and time. So it's up to the user what they do with it. That sounds really good actually, because you know, mostly when businesses brag about accepting Bitcoin or Litecoin coin or some other cryptocurrency, they don't do it directly. They don't have wallets of themselves. They just use some kind of payments processor to do the business for them. They pay a fee for this. But right. at the end of the day, I guess it's easier to pay your taxes in US dollars and have it calculated in a more easy way to understand because it gets confusing with regulations and how you're supposed to declare cryptocurrencies to the IRS in your yearly tax returns? I can, let me comment on that a little bit. Um, so it's actually not a complicated thing for the IRS when you take it for payment, right? So when you take payments in, let's take a restaurant, for example, right? They're supposed to report all the cash that they receive all the checks they receive, and all the credit card sales that they get. 
right? That's the current situation. So when we add Bitcoin or Litecoin as a payment, we just explain to them, look, you're, you have to report this as income as well. Whether they do or not, is it's like cash. Some restaurants do, some restaurants don't. But that's like, like anything in life. The person has to be have some responsibility. But for tax purposes, if, if I take in $100 worth of Litecoin at that time of sale, that's what goes on to my tax return. If I hold the Litecoin and it drops in price, that's on me. I still have to claim that initial 100 that I took in. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, if it goes up in price, I'm still just claiming the initial amount that I took in at the invoice amount. So it's actually, if you use a wallet like Loaf, it's pretty easy because it shows you like, hey, this is the date and time you took the payment in. Here's the price it was at. So it's pretty easy for accounting. Um, again, it's just adding a different, a different form of payment in there. So that, I get around that a lot, like where, People are worried because of tax reasons. And then I kind of put them to ease and they're like, hey, it's actually easier than, than cash. It's right there in a digital wallet. You have a record of everything that you did. I actually have Loaf Wallet on my phone. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> I've only used it a couple of times, I guess, when I bought the Litecoin book, which is written by eCurrency Hodler. And... It's very nice and convenient, I guess. It's the best kind of introduction you can have to di digital cryptocurrency wallets because it's very basic. You don't have many functions. But as you learn a little more, I guess you can get more advanced wallets which have much more security features. You, you don't, yeah, so for payments, we want to keep it simple. So Loaf is designed for payments, and it's, it's very basic. But basic for payments is key because we can show pretty much anybody how to open up a Loaf wallet and verify if a payment came in, even people that don't understand cryptocurrency at all. We can download the app on, on, on a tablet that the restaurant or business has control of and say if payments come in, you can see them right here. And they don't have, there's no clicking around in Loaf, which is awesome. The other cool thing with Loaf Wallet, say I sent you right now a crypto invoice to pay, right? And say I said to you, Vlad, I'm gonna sell you a t-shirt, right? Send me Litecoin before I mail it to you. I'm just gonna tell you I'm gonna send you a crypto invoice, right? When you get that invoice, you're gonna click on a link and a QR code is going to appear. When you pop open Loaf and scan it, it pulls in to Loaf Wallet the exact amount of Litecoin you're supposed to send. So you don't have to put in the right amount. You don't have to be pressing any buttons. All you're doing is scanning the code and hitting send. So it makes it for online shopping it's actually much easier to use cryptocurrency, especially if you're using it in a wallet like Loaf, than it is to use a credit card. So I'm just trying to get the, spread the word to people that, hey, this is actually easy to use. It's not something to be afraid of. So adoption is coming. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. Yeah, I agree. And I guess you take advantage of the low fees that you have in Litecoin. And I saw an announcement that the developers are planning to reduce the fees by 10 times, which is incredible. So That's it, awesome. That's, yeah, it's going to be amazing. We used to pay like, what, five cents for one transaction. And now it's going to be 0.5 cents. Yeah, it's, that's, which, is, which is awesome because um, if you're sending money out and it's costing you under a penny, it's a non-issue to people sending it, but you know, if you got to pay five, 10 cents on a small transaction, it's not people sometimes question it. Vlad, hold on one second. What's up, man? Okay. You, you could scan it again. No problem. He's, um, I just cut that from the interview. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, cool. 
We're doing a, he's doing a scan real quick. So just uh, if we can give one, one second, let him just scan the thing again. And then- uh, No worries. So you can kind of hear the noise in the background now. But when I when when I'm getting interviewed, we shut down commerce at Nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this should be in the in the interview. I shouldn't it's, take it out. It's a good joke. <laughs> it's real. It's real life. Real life in the life of Johnny Moore. All right. So he's he's gone. So we can get back to business. <laughs> But what about, uh, I had this question about, sure. which I've thought about for a while. You started out trying to spread adoption for Litecoin, but you extended your portfolio to also Bitcoin. Was it a decision just because Bitcoin has better branding and everybody has heard of Bitcoin and you no longer have to explain to people, you know, this is just like Bitcoin, but faster? Um. So I always look at, um, Litecoin and Bitcoin is kind of being allies in the crypto space. And um, so I look at it as if you're accepting Litecoin, you should be accepting Bitcoin as well. And vice versa, if you're accepting Bitcoin, there's no reason not to accept Litecoin. It's cheaper, it's faster, it's quicker, um, got all the advantages. So yeah, I, I, you know, I always liked both coins um, and I just kind of, uh, expanded a little more to let people know, hey, I'm happy to set you up to accept Bitcoin as well. Um, when we set up the Clover devices, we only set those up for Litecoin only. Again, you can only put one coin in there. Litecoin is the payments coin, so it's befitting that we just integrate Litecoin into it. But um, yeah, no, I'm all for accept, you know, having businesses accept Bitcoin and Litecoin payment um litecoin is a little more in a in a retail environment it's a little more feasible just because it is faster sometimes with bitcoin um it takes a little bit long so obviously it takes longer for the transaction for the for the block to go through and all that but when you send crypto payments you see it broadcast right away as long as a Bitcoin, it just seems like it's slower to broadcast. And uh, so it's just Litecoin is always faster to broadcast. The block clears faster. So it's definitely better for your over-the-counter stuff. But no, Litecoin and Bitcoin is the two that I focus on uh, for payment acceptance. Do you have any good stories or people coming back to you after you set them up to accept Bitcoin and Litecoin, telling you that they have made such a great decision and their business has grown due to this decision? So the cool thing is um, most businesses that we set it up for, they, they get a lot of people talking about it, they say, and they get a lot of people asking them questions because they see the sign, which is awesome. So that's, more my intention than anything is I want it to be seen and I want it to be known that in people's minds that I don't want people to think of Litecoin and Bitcoin as a, as a, as a stock, right? Americans think it's like buying Apple stock and it's not. They need to think of it as a currency first and then if they like it as a currency, well then invest in it if you like it as a currency. So I think the fact that it's being seen more as a payment, people are kind of like, oh, like, gee, I can, I didn't realize I can spend this stuff and use it for payment. So that's really like rewarding to me. Um, I've had a few businesses that have told me they've um, made sales that they wouldn't have made otherwise because they're accepting this, that um, they maybe got a phone call from out of the area. Like I have a jewelry store that, that said that um, he doesn't want to take credit cards over the phone because there's a high risk of fraud. So he had somebody that really wanted to buy something and he said to him, look, if you can pay with Litecoin or Bitcoin, I'm happy to sell it to you. And the person said, sure, I have, I have some Bitcoin. And um, I actually sent him Bitcoin in that case, but it was very, uh, he called me up, he was excited. He said, you know, I, I sold some jewelry, the guy paid in Bitcoin. and um, he was confident selling it. So 
I'm getting a lot of good feedback from it. Like nobody's angry that they set up to accept it. Everybody's like very positive. Um, you know, gets them out there too on social media, which is cool. So Twitter, we have a buzz going. So if they, you know, I urge all the people that accept it, hey, set up a Twitter so we can tag you in the tweets and uh, the people that are into this can follow you and then come in and spend their Litecoin with you as a merchant. So all, all good feedback so far. What about the Clover POS? Because I guess that was the greatest discovery that you've made, that there are millions of devices spread around the United States and you figured out how you can input Litecoin so they can accept crypto payments. So do you think that you can actually make uh, an important or considerable percentage of those who own Clover POS devices to accept cryptocurrency? Um, I don't see why not. Um, we got to get to all the people and talk to them but, um, and keep promoting it online so they know that it's an option that they can use. The, the key for payment adoption, and this is for any payment that businesses want to, want to accept. It's not just Litecoin or Bitcoin. This could be credit cards, gift cards, um, even cash, right? It has to work in, the ex, in their existing environment. It's very hard to tell a business, we want you to take Litecoin, but now when you accept it, you have to go to this whole new system and do something. The business is going to say, well, we don't want to do it. Even if it's credit cards, if we say there's a new credit card system, we have to go to this new thing and do it. They're going to say, no, no, it has to work with my existing system, right? We have to like integrate everything into what they do. So with Clover, being able to turn on that feature and function when we get that excuse when the business says, I would take Litecoin, but it's, my terminal doesn't, doesn't do it. Or now we just say to them, well, we can make your terminal do it. We can make your point of sale do it. And the key for the manager or the owner of the business is that the sales that are put into the point of sale system can close out properly. So, if you, don't, if you can't put a Litecoin payment button in there, they'll never be able to do the sale properly because if someone comes in and pays with Litecoin, they're gonna, have to, they're gonna have to notate it as something else. But with Clover, we could put Litecoin in there as an option. Now, for their accounting and tax purposes, they have a report that they could just send right to their accountant and say, here's the exact amount of Litecoin we took. It's in the point of sale. It's easy also too on the server. You know, the whole thing with cryptos is, um, you know, we don't wanna have to teach everybody how to do this. We wanna just say, look, go through your normal life and normal day like you do and your, how you run payments to the system. And if you get Litecoin in, you're doing what you normally do. You're just hitting a button that says Litecoin. And that the owner of the business or the manager will say, gee, this looks really easy okay, we'll, we'll do it. That sounds, it sounds easy enough. And then it's in Clover. They actually get kind of excited to do it because we, it's another feature they can use in Clover. And it, it prints a QR code on the receipt. So I show them too. I say, look, QR codes are everywhere. Like going to Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, they're displaying QR codes to you. And I tell them, now you're doing what the biggest companies in the world are, are kind of doing. You're, you, you're promoting a QR code, which in their minds, they see the QR code and that kind of, they kind of understand it when they see the QR code. It's as crazy as that sounds. It kind of, it clicks for the people when they see that QR code. Until we show them that, they're lost. We literally show them that and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. I've seen it in Starbucks <laughs> or Venmo or something. So yeah, Clover, Blot is huge, and um, I'm so excited that we that I kind of discovered that, and we could show it to every merchant now in the country. Where do you see adoption heading? Like, you're going about every day knocking on doors and talking to business owners. At least that's what I see on Twitter. I'm not sure if you go literally every day, but 
do you see other people maybe in different states or in different countries doing exactly the same and spreading the same type of adoption that you are doing? Um, I mean, I think some people will. I think, um, I don't know if many people are going to be out there like, like I am really trying to promote it as heavily. But the key is that I'm a credit card processor. That was always my business. Other processors now can promote this as a payment form, and they may not do it to the extent I do with the free wallets and all that, but they'll promote a gateway that they can mark up and make some money on. And at least they're out there showing the public that it, that it is a payment form. So I think the adoption will come from the other payment processors showing this to the public that, hey, this is a tool to use. It's a viable form of payment. And the people that are in the position I'm in should embrace this 100% because you, it gives you a secure payment option to show your clients. So a lot of people are afraid because they feel like they're, they're going to lose the control. But truth be told, Vlad, most businesses want a software to do the payment for them, right? They don't want, they're not going to want to do the wallet to wallet stuff. So there's always going to be money to be made as the processor. So I think it's just get letting those other processors know, Hey, you can make a few bucks doing this. And the thing is, it's not going to be the majority of their sales anyways, right now. It's not going to cut into the credit cards really much anyways, right now. So it's just an option to offer their clients that that's secure. I mean, this is a, uh, I tell people you're being patriotic by doing this. And people say, think that's crazy. Cause like, well, it's, it's kind of against the dollar, but I actually, we have in the back there, I have a chart of the national debt and I, I just show them the U S national debt. And I say, promoting this, to people, meaning the regular system and the debt, isn't patriotic because you're promoting a system that is on a crash course. So now if you're promoting secure money and a better form of money to people, you're actually doing a great service for the community. So that's kind of where I see adoption heading that people in my position will start offering it as a payment option. More for online, right? The retail stuff, Retail stuff is tricky. Again, in the first line of the Satoshi white paper, they mentioned that Bitcoin was designed to be a peer-to-peer um, -peer cash system for internet and online transactions. It's very important for everybody to realize when they say, hey, why is Walmart not taking Litecoin yet in the store? Tell them that. The focus would be for Walmart's online e-commerce site where we focus on the retail store. So just always keep that in mind too, that online payments is where the, the focus should be at. Do you think you can ever convince these business owners to run a full node of Litecoin for security purposes so they can validate their own transactions? Um. I think when you see Lightning Network rolling out um, more um, than it is now, because like, like Lightning Network's out, but it's not like really being used a lot yet by the public for payments. So I feel like as that's really going to be used, businesses will have more incentive to run their full node. Right now, I don't think there's really... Um, the business doesn't have any incentive to do it. So it's all, it's all incentive based for the business. But even if they run a lightning node, they're only going to get a few cents and the gears to run the node cost about $400 right now. The, well, obviously I'd expect the fees when it's, the fees will come way down to do that as it's more um, like anything as it's out there for longer the price gets, gets cheaper. So again, it's gotta be the need for it right now. Like right now a business can 
take cryptos and they don't have to, or they take Litecoin, they don't have to run a full node to validate what's going on. So it'd be hard to convince a business right now to run a full node. That's just how, how, I, how I see it. I agree. But at the same time, if you could convince them to run a full node, you would actually spread the decentralization and help True. the entire network. True. Um, so that's very important to us, right? That's why I'm here. I want decentralized money is really important to me, right? I've seen all the bad in the payments world, but to the public, they don't, they don't care about decentralized. Like it's very, they just don't get it. They just say to me, John, I want it to be easy. I want money to go to my bank. That's it. So until they have the real incentive to do it, where I think when Lightning Network is used more, you're going to see a lot more adoption, a lot more Bitcoin and Litecoin payments coming in. Then the business, again, has that incentive to run it if they're getting a lot more transactions. It's all about the, the, it's all about the demand and the volume. So I just think in time, we'll be able to convince more businesses to do it, but not just yet. I saw your panel from the Litecoin Foundation conference, which took place in September. And I guess I really appreciated how candid and honest you are about how you got into Litecoin and how you view it and how you approach it, even as a private person in relation to your wife. And could you summarize that in a few minutes, just so our viewers can skip that 30 minute speech? <laughs> <laughs> sure, so I, um, I kind of started out, I talked about a lot of the problems that exist in the credit card payments world, right? So the public doesn't notice the problems because they walk around with the plastic card and get points, rewards points, and they think, hey, this system works great. So. I drew, brought light to what we call credit card chargebacks, which is when the business loses money after they take a credit card payment in. It's important for your audience to know that a credit card sale is never final. The business can lose money for up to six months. So you're never really fully confident taking that credit card in. Okay, so I brought that up. Second thing I brought up, I talked about what, they, what we call a cash reserve. A cash reserve, a lot of businesses that sell online, they can't just start processing credit card payments. They have to fund an account that they, we call a cash reserve. And I've been working with one business in particular. If I wanted to set him up to process credit card transactions, he would have had to fund $10 million into a cash reserve just for the privilege of processing payments. The public doesn't understand that this goes on. So again, that business type could only exist if they're backed by really wealthy people that can fund this $10 million reserve. I mean, I could never start a business like that and say, I'm gonna take credit card payments. I don't have millions of dollars behind me to do it. So I, I brought up that. And then I just said how like a lot of the problems that Litecoin solved. So one that the audience loved at the, at the summit was, I said about how it offers a discrete payment option. And when I say that, people think a lot of times I'm referring to um, uh, something bad. They say, well, gee, John, are you trying to buy drugs? Are you going on the dark net? What are you hiding from, right? And I tell them that, because you want a discrete form of payment doesn't mean you're doing something bad. So I explained to the audience that I'm married, right? And like most married people, you share the accounts with your wife, right? Or significant other. You have the same checking account and you use the same uh, credit card accounts, right? So when holidays come around, it's hard for me to buy any type of present for my wife because she knows what I'm buying. So I, I told the story about flowers, that I bought my wife flowers one time. And 
before she even got the flowers, she saw the charge on the credit card, called me up and said, did you buy flowers? And I said, yeah, I bought flowers. She said, well, who'd you get flowers for? And I said, well, I, I got them for you. And she goes, I don't want flowers and you got ripped off. Why'd you spend that much on flowers <laughs> for something else? By the time the flowers came, I was, I was ready to throw them in the yard, right? I, wanted to, I didn't want to see these flowers, right? So there's a website called petalsonastem.com that I found. They take Bitcoin and Litecoin for payment. I went in and got my wife these flowers a second time around. Total surprise. And she actually said to me, how'd you get the flowers? I didn't see the credit card charge. And I said to her, aha, I use Litecoin. You would never be able to know what I was spending the money on. So it, again, it's just a way to, as the world becomes more digital, everything we do is now under a microscope, whether we like it or not. Everything's tracked, everything's seen. And just in a simple thing, like a husband and a wife trying to be romantic with one another, well, in the future, when there's no more cash, if everything goes to credit card, how on earth could you surprise your significant other with a present? You can't. So I joked around. I said, I think Litecoin and Bitcoin is going to save marriages. So it's <laughs> so thank you, Charlie Lee, for creating this. You've helped save my marriage. <laughs> About Charlie Lee, what is he like? Because I saw that you met him a few times. And I think a lot of people have this type of, I don't know, malevolent impression of him because he sold his coins. And in this bear market, it's so easy to blame somebody for not having skin in the game. And he became less involved publicly. He doesn't post as much. He used to be this guy who was trolling on Twitter and responding to every message and now he's gone a bit quieter and you had the chance to meet him uh, a few times in the last four or five months since consensus when you took him to the airport yeah he had, he had to drive with me so he's uh <laughs> he had to drive with me in new york city so we uh he's a really brave man that he got in the car with me flying through traffic but uh no, he's a, um, he's a really great guy. He's a real gentleman. I mean, um, he's got no ulterior motives. Um, he's about adoption. He wants adoption. He's not a salesman, Charlie Lee. So some people are a good salesman, right? He's not. He's, he, he downplays a lot of stuff. So he's just kind of telling you what he thinks. He's not trying to sway you one way or the other. He's a real, like, he's a real good guy. He's not, like I said, he doesn't have any bad intentions. And, you know, he donated the money to the Litecoin Foundation from the coins that he sold. So I tell people, if you want to be mad at him for selling the coins when it was nearing a, a high, he donated that money to help Litecoin going forward. So if anything... He helped the project more by doing that because he helped fund the Litecoin Foundation and what we're doing right now. So I think that um, people just have to look at it different and not, you know, again, in a bear market, it's very easy to point fingers. I mean, people, people are angry at me constantly on my Twitter that I'm trying to tell people to pay with Litecoin. They're like yelling at me that credit cards is the best and, why am I telling people this? So again, I think people just want to be angry right now. And he's an easy kind of source to go to. But he's an awesome guy. Can't wait to see him again. Uh, and uh, yeah, just, you know, definitely um, I like his vision. And I trust like kind of what he says. So it's a very good like, um, he's a good like trusted source to go to and ask stuff of. He's not. He's not, again, he's not trying to sway you one way or the other. So very important in any type of business to have somebody that is just kind of like neutral in how they view things because you're going to get a very unbiased answer from them. So that to me is, is really key. I think I just have one last question. 
and then we can wrap this up. Sure. We have gone for longer than 30 minutes, which okay. is great. And what does a regular week of work look like to you? How much time do you spend on in the field just going to businesses and talking to owners? And how much time do you spend at the office? Um, I probably do, do half and half. Um, now, a lot of the owners I talk to, I'm working on regular payment stuff with them, like getting them a clover or talk, getting them a credit card system set up. And then um, I'm weaving in Litecoin with it. So it's kind of cool because I'm in a unique position where Litecoin, you know, it's very, again, it's a, it's a payment and I'm a payments guy. So it's, again, it's what I'm doing anyways. The weather's cold now here, Vlad. So it's, kind of walking around and knocking on doors in the New Jersey and the Northeast. You don't do it as much in the winter time. Now more it's people that are, I kind of spoke to ahead of time, people that are interested in seeing me. Um, actually the one guy that was in here before, um, he has a lot of clients that process credit card payments through him. He actually finds me a lot of people too that are interested in processing Litecoin. So he set up a big meeting for me next week with a very fancy restaurant and they're part of a restaurant group and they want to talk about accepting Litecoin for the whole restaurant group, which is awesome because now we're not talking about one restaurant. We're talking about a lot of restaurants, which is, which is definitely so, so awesome. So again, I spend a lot of time at night too working on stuff like, um, you know, every day I'm doing stuff for Litecoin. So I do a lot of stuff at night with like, I get a lot of people on Twitter ask me questions. I help answer emails for the Litecoin Foundation for people that want to pay with Litecoin. So, and again, a lot of people are, they're not in the East Coast. So I kind of will sometimes work around their schedule. If they're in the West Coast or maybe they're in uh, Europe or somewhere and I got to kind of work at a different time. So when... My biggest push now is going to be, Vlad, is going to be colleges. Um, I want to get out to a lot of colleges and universities in the Northeast and promote adoption there because I want to go where people are going to be the most interested in Litecoin. And if we go to places where they have a young audience spending money, they're going to get a lot more people that want to actually pay with Litecoin. And the businesses have more interest there because we say to them, this is a payment type that appeals to kids. So don't you want to appeal to the kids? So they welcome it more than if we, if we went through a town and it's all senior citizens there and we're saying, hey, pay with Litecoin. You know, your customers are dying to pay this way. We look around and everybody's like 80 or 90 years old. They're going to be like, no. maybe they'll give them a gold coin. But uh so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it right now. Again, anybody that wants to talk to me or see me, I will come visit and see, or I'll do a Zoom meeting or a Skype call, and uh, we'll get them, we'll get the adoption going and get them accepting Litecoin. That's awesome. And I, I appreciate your energy and your commitment. I guess Thanks. it's hard when you see that the market is crashing and the odds are not in your favor, and maybe you <laughs> don't have the best arguments because it's so much easier to walk through the front door of a shop and say, you know, I represent a company which can help you accept Bitcoin and Litecoin. Have you seen the news? Bitcoin is soaring. And <laughs> it has reached a new all-time high and people can't wait to spend it. <laughs> You're very true, but um, I tell everybody, um, anybody is depressed and has crypto depression, get on a quick call with me and you'll be quickly motivated again. So I'm not, I'm like the happiest camper every day. Litecoin, even in the worst bear market, puts a smile on my face. So this is like, I love this stuff. I love talking about it. So if you're ever down in the dumps, find me on Twitter, say, hey, John, I need a quick pep talk with you. I'll have you running down the street screaming Litecoin after the call. So, uh, <laughs> Um, I'm always motivated. <laughs> I guess, and I guess this is the last comment, but 
I can see a certain similarity between what you do and what Roger Veer used to do when he was in Bitcoin in 2012, 2013. He used to do kind of the same, but he was more focused on big businesses, on corporations and banks, and he was trying to get Bitcoin on Wall Street. And he helped create the Bitcoin Foundation. But you are much more focused on the small folks. And I, I guess that's where the adoption should come from. Yeah. I'm a, it's because I have a confession to make. I really hate banks and big institutions. <laughs> so in my mind, I don't want to be associating with those people. I want to get out there and, and help the public with this stuff. This is, this is not about banks and institutions. This is the people's currency. So I want to just be known to the public that, I'm a guy that is helping people. I don't want to ever be dealing with big banks and institutions. I want to help people at the individual level. And there's plenty of other people in this space that want to make deals with, with big banks. And we, we need those people too. I mean, I'm not going to be in a suit shaking hands with CEOs of banks. It's not in my DNA to do that. I'm in a I might come in in a pay with Litecoin sweatshirt and a hat like a regular guy and uh, shoot the breeze with you. But um, I can get dressed up if needed to talk to a law firm or a, or a nicer business. So if anybody sends me a referral and says, John, can the Litecoin shirt for this one, wear a, a collared shirt or something, I will do it. But uh, you're exactly right, man. I want to get out there and um, I want to talk to the people. That's what I'm here for. So. Thank you again for having me on. I'm really happy that we did this and best of luck, I guess. It's difficult in these times. It's cold yeah. and the market is also cold or maybe <laughs> colder than the weather. That's all right. I got, stay tuned to my Twitter. Um, if anybody's out there, I'm Johnny Litecoin on Twitter. I have a lot of places coming up in the next um, few months that are gonna be coming on board accepting Litecoin. So we are making New Jersey the pay with Litecoin state in the US. So if you come to Jersey, load up your loaf wallets. I got the businesses to send you to the pay with Litecoin. And most of them will give you a discount as well. So take care guys. <laughs> Bye. I can't wait to come to New Jersey. <laughs> nice. I'm buying you dinner when you come in there. All right. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for again. this. Bye.